Hello y'all and welcome back to Young Folk Knits. Today I'm going to chat all about textured fall knitting patterns, specifically some newer ones that have been recently released. So stick around and let's round up some patterns. Tomorrow is Sunday, September 22nd, and that means that it is the first official day of fall. Arkansas didn't get the memo. It's rather warm, but cool temps are coming. When I think of fall, I really think of those warm autumnal colors, but I also picture fabric that has warm, cozy texture to it. Ribbing, brioche, different textures created with knits and pearls like seed stitch or moss stitch and all the different ways that it can be used. To me, this is the epitome of fall knitwear. So every now and again during the month, I like to jump on Ravelry, look at the newly released patterns, and I have gathered up a few that have been released at least in the last few months. So they're new-ish and some are very new. And I've picked out some of my favorite textured knits that I think will be perfect if you're craving that fall fabric. As always, I have created a bundle on Ravelry, which I will link in the description so you can find all of the patterns in case any of them catch your eye. Some of them are free, some of them are paid for, but all of them are delicious. The first one I want to share is a new pattern by Irene Lynn. This was released in September 2024, so this month, and it is the Ruth Pullover. So this sweater is designed in Gepard Garn. This is a sport weight yarn, which is 70% linen and 30% silk. So definitely not designed with a woolly yarn. I think that she was mainly going for drape, but I think that in a sport weight merino wool, this would be lovely. This is a really gentle V-neck pullover, long sleeves, very oversized, very drapey, almost blouse-like instead of a pullover jumper top sweater. It uses different kinds of rib. I love that it is knit top down because that is my favorite way to knit a sweater. It is much easier for me to get a better fit that way because of my bust. I need to be able to try it on to determine when to split for sleeves. The yoke depth is really important for me personally. So I love a top down sweater. This is knit on a four millimeter US six needle. I love how she did two different designs. One with 14 and a half inch positive ease, which is the brown sample. And it's also a little bit shorter. And then you have the green sample, which has 18 inches of positive ease. So another four inches added to it. And you can see that it is a little bit longer because of that extra ease, it is falling down. I personally really prefer the one with 14 and a half inches of positive ease and the slightly more cropped look to it. I think that it is very chic. It really gives that oversized uh, sort of poet shirt, ruffle blouse look, and I think it is absolutely beautiful. It has different sections of ribbing. I just think it's a really fun pullover, a fun design with a lovely execution. Another new pattern I really fell in love with is a free one. So this was recently released on the Hobie website and it is the Barley Filled Slipover. This is designed by Jojo Knitwear and it uses the Hobie Davina and the Hobie Soft Alpaca Lace. So there's a worsted and a lace weight held together for a bulky weight gauge. You're aiming for 15 stitches per four inches and that's something, for instance, I could also get with Noro yarn. I really find with a heavy Aran weight or a bulky weight gauge, this works out well. I love the textured look you're getting with the lace. It is bottom up, which is not my favorite, but it is knitting around. And I also love a good vest in the fall. To me, in Arkansas weather, whenever it starts to get cool, but it's not frigidly cold, 
and you want to wear knitwear, a vest is your best friend. It's perfect for transition. You can throw a jacket on over it. If it's warmer and you don't need a coat, you can just wear it as a nice layering piece. You can have so much fun with a color either going neutral or bright for a pop of fun. And this is going to knit up really fast because, as I mentioned, it is a 15 stitch gauge. Not to mention this is a free pattern. So if you choose a cost effective yarn, you are getting a lot of bang for your buck here between your pattern and your yarn choice. So I don't know about y'all, but when I think about fall and cooler temperatures, something I start getting really excited for are cozy socks. I go all summer with wearing socks as little as possible. <laughs> And whenever the temperatures start getting colder, thanks to my lovely friend of poor circulation, I start getting very painful cold feet and warm, cozy, woolly socks just bring me so much joy. There's one thing though I love to add to most of my sock patterns. I usually like to knit my sock patterns top down, so cuff down. And I like to add a tubular cast on to most of my socks. But for some people, the tubular cast on with socks can be a little bit daunting. If that is you, then I think you would really appreciate a video which I found from the sponsor of today's video, and that is Craftsy. Craftsy is an online community where literally millions of crafters, makers, DIY lovers like ourselves can find creative inspiration and also learn new skills. If you're not new here, many of you will have heard me mention Craftsy and how it helped me in my spinning journey. The videos and the expert instructors were priceless, but Craftsy also has amazing knitting instructional classes. A great one is New Beginnings with Magic Cast-Ons. This class features everything you need to get great socks. The Magic Cast-On for your toe-up socks and the Tubular Cast-On for Cuff Down, so you get beautiful finishes either way. It also talks about the two color cast on which can be a bit tricky. I love that to help you master this and practice your skills the class includes six projects like a brim tat, an infinity cowl, and more. But like most of you out there, I am multi -craftual. So I love not only knitting, but also spinning, crochet, drawing, cooking, sewing, quilting. You can find classes for all of these interests and more. And you can even connect with fellow makers and DIY lovers like yourself to ask questions, share ideas, and keep you inspired. So if you would like to try Craftsy, the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a full one-year premium membership for only $1.49. Don't miss that chance to up your craft game at an amazing price. Thanks again, Craftsy, for sponsoring today's video. So now that you know how to get a great cast on for your socks, a pair I really like that was released in August of 2024 is called the Lines Socks. This is such a beautifully textured sock. I love how the lighter neutral really shows off that gorgeous texture as well. This is a top-down pattern, but I think it's really interesting because it uses a Dutch heel construction. This is a heel I've never done before. I really think it would be fun to give it a go, and the way that it sort of comes in and then flares back out a bit, it looks like it's gonna give a really nice snug fit on the heel, and I'm very interested in trying this construction out. It does look like that is some twisted rib, which could be <laughs> a little hard on my hands using small circumference needles. This might be a pattern for socks that I would break down and do a magic loop on just so I could have the long needle tips. I find that doing twisted rib with the shorty needles really tires my hands quickly and causes pain <laughs> very quickly. So I would love to knit these but I would probably have to do magic loop which might slow me down a little bit but I think it would be worth it. Another sock pattern I found very interesting is the Simply Irresistible Socks Harvest Basket. This is a pattern by Christine Archer and it was released this month, September 2024. It is a fingering weight classic style sock. It has a lovely textured pattern that looks simple to create but goes a long way in giving you a little extra something something <laughs> on your socks. I, again, find the heels on these very interesting. In the description, it says that these socks don't require fancy measurements or tricky heel constructions. The carefully chosen stitches work in harmony 
to naturally shape to any foot, eliminating any fit concerns. I think that they are using simply rib all the way down the back of the sock so that you don't have to do any kind of special heel construction. I've never made socks like that before. I'm not sure about the fit, but I think it's very interesting as a gift knitting idea. You do not have to ask as far as the measurements lengthwise, as long as you make sure your width wise is gonna be big enough. And again, with ribbing, you're gonna get the stretch and give, which is a little bit more forgiving as far as a perfect fit on socks go. This could be a great intro to socks if you're concerned about doing a heel flap and gusset or any kind of short row heel shaping. It seems like it would be a very effortless way to make socks. Also, I just want to apologize. I'm using my microphone. I can hear this very loudly. I don't know if it's going to be picked up or not. We are currently out of power. We had a squirrel jump into our transformer and blew the transformer. So now we have a dead squirrel and no power and our generator is running very loudly. So I do apologize if that is coming through on the microphone. Hopefully it's not. Another beautiful new textured pattern, which was released this month as well, is the Meadow Flower Wrap. So this is a really beautiful cropped wrap and it's meant to be worn with negative ease. I think it is something that's gonna be absolutely exquisite, worn with dresses or high-waisted pants or skirts and a little bit more cropped so that you can tie it at your natural waist. I think that would be extremely flattering. It is knitted bottom up and it flat, but the beautiful end result makes up for it. The sleeves are knitted separately in the round and then you connect it all and work the raglan decreases. Then to, it looks like the finishing is done with an eye cord. I think something that is really pretty about this is the bottom edging, which is done with a crochet trim. So that can be a lot of fun and works pretty quickly actually compared to knitting a fancy scalloped edge. I love that beautiful lacy texture and I love that the designer is showcasing different colors on different models on the pattern page. I think it's just absolutely beautiful. I love the v-neck. I think that's very flattering. This is something I would really like to make. I think it would be often worn with many different outfits. Another newly released fun textured knit is the Willow Pullover, which is designed by Andrea Gone. This is a bottom up crew neck drop sleeve. It is just the epitome of texture. Every inch of this is highly textured and gives massive fall vibes. I think basket weave is a really fun pattern to knit actually and I like it especially in a relaxed fit style and it looks to me like yeah, there is a double folded collar and some nice short row shaping in the back to get a dropped crew neck in the front. It looks like it has a very nice and comfortable fit to it. This is a DK weight yarn, and I see one sample is knit in Biche et Bouche Les Petite Lambs Wool, which is a lovely fingering weight wool yarn and held with the Biche et Bouche Les Petite Silk Mohair. So I think that would be a really nice, fun, cozy combo, but for a little bit of an easier knit, you could definitely just hold a strand of DK weight wool by itself, and I think it would look lovely. Another pattern which was released in July of 2024, so a few months back, by Teti Lutzak is the Drevo Pullover. This was knit in sport weight Retro Zario, the Rosa Pomar. So this is a nice sport weight 100% wool yarn. This shape, the shaping of this pullover is something that is a very classic Teti pullover in my opinion. She has multiple vests and pullover jumpers that have this sort of modified v-neck and I think it's really lovely. She's also often known for a very long ribbing. I just think that the ribbing along with the beautiful what looks like cables on the front that go all the way around is a very elevated texture style. This is not a design that you can easily buy. This is not one that I have seen 
the shaping from anyone else besides Tetty. And I would really like to make one of these at some point. One of the patterns that she has with this shaping, I think I would like it with more of a cropped look, some positive ease, and quite a long ribbing. I think this would look absolutely lovely worn over dresses with perhaps a more fitted sleeve and a lovely autumnal color. I can definitely see it. Another new sweater design that was released this month in September of 2024 is the Kip sweater, which is designed by Rebecca Klo. This is texture personified. It is a top down sweater drop sleeve, crew neck, and it uses slip stitches to get those beautiful all over blocks of texture. This is knit in Durerum Natura Ulysse, which is a sport weight merino wool yarn. It's absolutely lovely. And it is recommended to be knit on US 8 or five millimeter needles. When I think of herringbone fabric, I definitely think of quintessential fall textured fabric. And I think that this would be lovely to achieve that. The lighter the yarn you use, the easier you're going to be able to see this texture. I think from a distance, this is such a mild texture that it might be harder to appreciate the texture, especially in a darker colored yarn. So I think um, a more neutral, lighter color yarn, and it doesn't have to be white. I think that some lovely camel, chestnut, browns, or light greens, Anything that isn't too deeply saturated, that's not leaning too dark, you're still gonna be able to see that lovely texture. And dark yarn should still look beautiful in this. It's just gonna be harder to appreciate all of the work you put into those textured stitches if you can't see them as easily. But to each their own, I don't judge. One other new textured pattern I wanted to share is the Alpine Journey hat. This is a pattern designed by Moira Hunt, and it's designed in the North Bay Fiber Journey yarn. This is an Aran Weight Romney wool, and it is beautifully bouncy and thick and plump and lovely. I think that is the perfect yarn for some gorgeous stitch definition and cables. This hat does utilize both cables, a nice ribbing on the brim, and then some lovely moss stitch or seed stitch. I didn't see which it is um, along the sides. You're also using twisted rib, so you're getting some extra plump ribbing. There's five sizes, so you can make one to fit anybody in the family. Great for gifts. Depending on the size you're making, you only need anywhere from 63 to 230 yards. So you're getting an awesome textured end piece here with minimal yarn usage. You can have a yummy FO quick. All right, y'all, that is all for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future video content. And as a big thank you for hanging out with me today, I would love to gift one of you one of these patterns. So if any of these are of interest to you, let me know in the comments which pattern is your favorite and that's all you have to do to enter. If you don't use Ravelry, then I will figure out another way to get the pattern to you. Thanks again, Craftsy, for sponsoring today's video. And until next time, happy knitting, y'all.